Western Michigan looking for back-to-back -back home wins to close out the slate at University Arena this year, leading by four at halftime against Eastern Michigan. Rob Murphy, the Eagles head coach, just spoke to Sam Madlin. Sam, what do you have to say? Eastern Michigan head coach Rob Murphy told me that his team needs to execute better on the offensive end. He said Western Michigan did a really good job on the defensive end, getting them out of their set pieces. Also, Eastern Michigan shot 18% from beyond the arc, and I asked him, are you guys going to continue to shoot those threes? He said only if we're open, but they want to establish their presence in the paint to start the second half. Evan. Sam, thanks. Coach, what do you think of what Rob Murphy had to tell Sam there at halftime? I think that's spot on. <laughs> We got to establish that we got a seven footer inside. He's got to get a touch or two every possession. You're shooting 18%. You're hurting yourself, not helping yourself. Rob Murphy, the basketball. second winningest head coach in the history of Eastern Michigan hoops. Trying to take down the interstate foe, Western Michigan, for the second time this year. Eagles beat the Chippewas of Central Michigan twice this year. If they come back and win today, it'll be the first time that Eastern Michigan has swept the two teams in the state since 1999 2000. It's been a while. Johnson tipped, stolen by Torre. That's what the Eagles do well. 10 steals a game, 10.1 to be exact. Second best in the whole country. I think Johnson, if you just faked that pass and then drove to the basket, because he really wasn't being pressured to make the pass. There's a good three. Thomas Pinnell is their best shooter, and he knocks down his first triple of the second half. Western does not want to let him heat up behind the arc. Johnson moving on Torre. What a pretty floater that falls. Ubicar Torre back in, the big guy number 21 down low. Titus Wright picked up two quick fouls trying to guard him in the first half. Torre doubled, kicks to Spotsville. Whiten stops him, but couldn't stop him long enough. Darion still scores. Well, Spotsville does a nice job of getting inside the lane, two feet, has a reverse pivot and a step through. Eight points in the game for the junior from Phoenix. He only averages four points a game in the year. Right, kicks, White leaps and catches. Shot clock at 10. Whitens inside, Johnson rises, misses, rebound, Gross tapped it to himself. And that one time in that possession did Western attack a gap and draw any defenders. Pinelli nearly made another three. Rebound banging off of bodies down low and it will stay with the road team. Okay, so if you're Bubakar Torre, coach, in the second half, if you're Rob Murphy too, how are you trying to get your big guy involved in the offense? He still hasn't scored. If I'm Bubakar, I am demanding the ball inside. I am screaming for the ball. And I'm letting my teammates know I better get a touch. Spotsville hesitating, takes the contact and scores. Darion into double figures for the sixth time this year. And Eastern Michigan's roared all the way back. They've got the lead. How long will it last? That's now the question. Western's got to attack some gaps here, draw some defenders so they can get behind that defense. Shot clock running down again. Johnson, no luck to right. Now five to shoot. Flowers fakes. Three to shoot. Rises and hits, falling away. Well, that's that signature shot by Flowers, that dribble penetration, pull-up jumper. Broncos led 31-27 at the break. Eagles have more points here in the second half. Broncos just took the lead back. Benelli tries again. One of three in the second half. Gross follow, no, but a foul. That's one thing that Gross does really well, and King does really well. The shot goes up. They're great at fouling after that shot for a putback. They get the foul on Johnson. That's now two on Brandon. Coach, what do you make of this trend in college hoops where the guy takes the first free throw? There are no teammates around him. It happens everywhere. Yeah, it happens everywhere. And I think the way the game is being played right now, it's so quick and so, you know, players are so athletic. I mean, they can be up full court in two dribbles. So they figure we may as well just sag back in our D, especially with Eastern Michigan, a team that prides itself on settling into that zone. Gross knocked them both down, 72% shooter from the line out of the year. 
White elects to shoot. Good decision, he knocks it down. A big shot by the freshman. And a couple of threes tonight. Freshman from Canton, Michigan, a Mr. Basketball finalist in the state last year. Spotsville, no. Rebound was first corralled by White, and they're going to get a foul on Spotsville. He went over the back. The shot by Biardis was a great shot. He had 6'8 gross closing out on him. So it's like he's about 10, 8, 11, 8 shooting over top of him. B. Artist, not exactly the tallest guy at just 5'9", 150. He's a bit of a water bug out there on the floor. Flowers probe in the zone. Half the shot clock gone. B. Artist shoots again and hits again. Two huge back-to-back -back shots. That's going to cause the closeouts to be a little bit quicker for, for Eastern. Look for Western now to penetrate. Eagles roared out of the locker room and took the lead. The Broncos have battled back and taken the lead back. Ty Gross in answer. We're starting to heat up in Kalamazoo. Our score at the break was 31-27. Broncos on top. Both teams seemingly found their offense in the locker room. Johnson spinning inside the zone. And we've got a wedgie. We've been waiting all year for that. Foul called on Eastern Michigan, 23, Benelli. His Fouls second. on Thomas Benelli. The Italian picks up his second personal. And we go to break here in Kalamazoo. Good pace to this game in the second half so far. B. Artis White, two for two from downtown. And the Broncos are back in front. Western Michigan, for the most part, a young basketball team. There have been growing pains throughout the year, but the Broncos starting to feel it late in the year. They won on Saturday against NIU, and they're leading in their home finale tonight. And Coach B. Artis White, one of those young guys, the freshman from Camp, Michigan, looks darn good so far in the second half. He's made two three-pointers. He does. And what happens is he's getting his feet set, and he's jumping to the pass versus having to catch it, pivot, shoot. The artist White, three of six from the field, three of five from three. He's five foot nine, and he's tied for the team lead in rebounds tonight. How the heck is he doing that? Well, he's getting those rebounds from their three-point shots. He's on that weak side, and the shooter shoots the basketball. He gets boxed out by his defender, and there's a point guard to come in and scoop up that rebound. Guy at the line, Brandon Johnson, is also tied for the team lead in rebounds tonight with five. Brandon on the year is the Broncos' best rebounder at nearly eight per game, 7.9 to be exact. Brandon leads all Broncos scores tonight with 16 points so far, and he has made a living at the line. Eight of nine so far. Here comes attempt number 10. Broncos led by four at the break. Their lead is back to four. Eastern Michigan roared back in the first couple of minutes of the second half to take the lead. What a smart idea by Western to pick that ball up full court and put some pressure on it so they have to delay running their set plays. Torre battling down low with Wright. They just gave the freshman Titus Wright his third foul. Coach, you and I saw Titus Wright at halftime talking to the officials going, what do I have to do? I'm a freshman. I'm giving up height here to Bubikar Torre. How do I guard him? And apparently he wasn't listening uh, closely enough because he just picked up another foul. <laughs> yeah, we joked and, and asked the official jokingly, hey, how would you guard him? He's seven foot tall. The officials, maybe 5'9". Maybe so Titus sits, and now another freshman, Chase Bars, is the guy guarding Torre. Bubikar still hasn't scored yet tonight. Amidst a crowd, jumping up and down, and he draws a foul on Bars. He may have gotten poked in the eye. Remember that first half, Bars did a really nice job on him. Bubakar is still blinking in that left eye. Bars, the guy who picked up the personal. Now they're going to throw a towel here to Bubakar to make sure he's OK. Not sure if he wears contacts, coach, but that's always an issue, too. You get poked in the eye, maybe you'll lose the contact. 
I'm going to say the way he was wiping his face, he probably doesn't. Yeah. I think I speak the obvious here. Bubakar Torre is a large human being. He's 7 feet 240, and Chase Parr's given up height at 6'9", 185. Bubakar on the year, 46% from the free throw line. And the first one, no good. Well, when he got fouled, he was right next to the rim, so it might have been a pretty good foul. Trying to blink his way through it. Just got poked in the left eye. You can see it's kind of red in there right now. Couldn't get the roll on the second, and Johnson grabs the rebound, so Bubakar goes 0 for 2 from the line. Here's some pressure from the Eagles. Broncos break it. Cruz pushes, bounces, bars, got it and one. Interesting change by Eastern there. They ran a little run and jump press. They left it three and two at the other end of the floor. Great dish by Cruz. Bar was really smart to go to opposite side of the back basket or it would have been blocked. He scores it and draws the third foul on Bubakar Torre. One of the very best big man, big men in the Mid-American Conference has yet to score tonight, and he's sitting on the bench again with three fouls. What a credit to Western Michigan for neutralizing him for the most part down low tonight. There's a lot of Westerns to take a command in this game. Chris James, the freshman, no. Bars, another freshman, the rebound. Johnson along the baseline, working on King, who's had to come in for Torre for much of tonight. Swinging it around the perimeter. Flowers fakes the pass. Shot clock down to 10. Michael dribbles it out. Johnson had it stolen by King. Man, hasn't he been great tonight defensively been, for Eastern Michigan? He's been excellent. Real active. Both ends of the floor, really. Gross misses, Cruz rebounds. Eagles have gone cold. Broncos four for the last four from the field. White misses. Johnson rips the rebound away. Misses. Going for his own miss. Darion Spotsville stepped out of bounds. He thought Johnson shoved him out of bounds. Lost control along the baseline. And he very clearly stepped out of bounds. And this is Johnson fighting for everything, winning the 50-50 ball, scrapping. He's playing like a guy that didn't play last year. He has brought that effort night after night. Yeah, Spotsville was just waiting for the foul call to come, and it never did come. No, he touched, he was touching Flowers, who was out of bounds. Brandon comes out and gets well-deserved high fives and handshakes from all of his teammates. It's been a joy to watch him work this year. Six foot eight redshirt junior from Chicago, missed all of last year with the torn meniscus. He has just been a beast all year long for the Broncos. It's going to be all conference somewhere. Cruz well short, long rebound, and it's tracked down by the Eagles. Chris Barnes ahead to James, tight roping the baseline. Benelli short. He has been ice cold again from deep tonight. He is 1 of 8. He was 0 of 9 on Saturday against Central Michigan. And I think if you're the Eastern staff, you're like, you got to tell him, like, look, you got to shot fake and get to the basket. Touch foul on Dillard as Cruz drove in. Yeah, Coach, we talked to Rob Murphy, Eastern Michigan's head coach, before the game. Do you tell anything to a shooter like Benelli when he's struggling? He said, no, as long as they're good shots. It seems like he's taking good shots again tonight, but you're right. You keep missing them at some point. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting different results. Some of the shots are contested, and that one was kind of far away from the from the three-point line. Dillard just picked up his second foul in about 20 seconds. Foul called on Dillard as second, team's fifth. So Dillard is very confused on why he got called for a couple of fouls in a row. There's a sub coming in for Eastern Michigan. It'll take out Dillard, and Rob Murphy is searching for answers. Hit the bottom of the floor right now. D.J. Ballard, the one in. 
Eagles have pretty much used up their entire rotation tonight. Cruz fakes the three, bounces to a million. Missed, rebound, no. Patrick still battling down there. Amidst a crowd, King finds it. They call a hell ball, and the arrow's gonna give it to Eastern Michigan. Man, Western Michigan out of the break has really brought the fight to the Eagles. They have. You know, Evan, that's why they have, they have the lead right now, because they are trying to win the 50-50 ball. They're scrapping, they're on the floor. You need a million to, to step up like Johnson was. He's one tough Canadian battling down there. James, the freshman, kicks to DJ Ballard. Stopped his dribble in the corner. And Cruz just picked up the foul, nearly stole it from Bars, but the foul's going to go on Ralphie, and that's going to be the third personal on Cruz. Now Cruz has got a cut to the gap. He went to the man, so he hit the man. If he cuts to the gap, it's a deflection. See the ball a little bit sooner, anticipate. Crowd still loves the effort, giving Cruz a nice hand as he comes to the bench. Eastern Michigan trying to find some answers. Barnes provided one. Got the contact on White and got the end one opportunity. Wait, sound like a broken record, but you cannot let a guy spin, dribble, penetrate into the lane. So how do you stop that from happening? You've got to steer the ball to a side of the floor and keep it on that side of the floor. And then there's got to be help defense. Barnes can't complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Five-point game, Broncos led by four at the break. Remember, Western Michigan is 10-1 this year when they lead at halftime. Flower shoots, misses Long. Long rebound to White. And a foul on Eastern Michigan. No, Evan, for these last three or four minutes, the bright spot. It's doing all the little things right. Right now is Bars. He's playing really good defense. He's got a lot of movement on offense that's drawing defenders to him. Those things, there's no stat for those type of things. But it's helped Western maintain this lead. Get more and more minutes as the season goes along. Played 18 minutes against NIU on Saturday. 28 at Ball State last week. Flowers blocked. Great D by King again. It's been a revelation tonight for Eastern Michigan. Flowers, the steal, finds it on the floor, takes the contact and scores, and one. Great job of Flowers anticipating, jumping to the pass, getting a hand on it, and then trying to win that 50-50 half-court ball. A little bit of a grimace from Michael Flowers after he made this shot. Fighting through the pain. He wants a win for the seniors on senior night. It's senior night here in Kalamazoo, and the whole Broncos squad is trying to get a W for their seniors, Jared Printy and Adida Iconsul. Michael Flowers, the junior from Metro Detroit, he's been bouncing back over the last couple of games. Tied for the team scoring lead with 20 points in the last game against NIU on Saturday. He only scored nine combined points in the past two games. And coach, tonight, Flowers has been one of the better scorers for Western Michigan. 10 points, 4-10 shooting, knocked down a couple of threes. What are you seeing out of Michael tonight? He seems a little bit more patient. He's making better decisions. And when it helps when your teammates are making the defense move, your shots aren't contested. Anytime you face a zone like Western Michigan is facing tonight, the shots are going to have a little bit of an alteration to them. You are going to face some length, especially with the way that Eastern Michigan recruits longer guys. Western Michigan has benefited from the fact that Bubakar Torre, one of the better bigs in the conference, he has not played very much tonight. He's been in foul trouble for much of the night. Flowers completes the old-fashioned three-point play that he started before we went to break. Let's go to the sideline. Sam Matlin's got one. Eastern Michigan's head coach Rob Murphy telling his team during that last time out, he's like, listen, no one can score today. He said someone needs to step up, take a man on and have confidence when you beat them to the basket. On the defensive end, he said they need to play better defense and get some more stops here, Evan. Yes, yeah, Sam, that's absolutely right. Their leading scorer is Darion Spotsville, who has just 10 points. Bars met at the rim. 
Johnson says, nope, I do not think so. Well, he came across the lane with a laser. For a block like that, you got to give him the Dikembe Mutombo finger wag. Not in my house. Barnes tries again, misses, and Johnson grabs the rebound. Brendan wanted to block that one, too. Murphy, coach wanted a foul right there, and, and Barnes is doing what, what uh, the staff wants him to do, is they, hey, we got to keep penetrating and attacking the basket. Eastern Michigan gives up the fewest points per game in the MAC. They're tied for that with Ball State, but the problem on the flip side is they don't score very many points either. They score the fewest points in the MAC. It's 65 points a game. Their leading scorer on the year, Ty Gross, averages 11.6 points per game. And tonight, coach, the skeletons are out of the closet again. Eastern Michigan just having problems scoring the basketball. Right, and that's why Coach Murphy said, for the team, you've got to get to the basket. Johnson on the attack to the rim traveled and it's going back to Eastern Michigan. Okay, so the five and the four right now for Eastern Michigan are Chris James, a sub, Chris Barnes, a sub. They're bringing back Gross, one of their starters, Noah Morgan, who's their first guy off the bench. Thomas Benelli, their best shooter on the year, but he's about to come out. And to be honest, he's been terrible the last two games. He was 0-9 from three last game. Tonight, he's 1-9 from three. Jalen King down low because Torrey's still in foul trouble. So who are you going to here? Is it Gross? You're attacking the basket. Barnes has tried that three times in a row, but he's missed every time. But your attack can't be from the initial you know, possession. You've got to make the defense move, and nobody moved. Johnson in the middle of the zone. Spins, spins again, leans right. And he's going to the line. If you're Western, you keep attacking. Try to find Johnson inside because he's going to go to the free throw line. And he's shooting free throws well tonight. He's 9 and 10 tonight. And over his last 50 games, 15 games, he's 87%. And on cue, he misses. Back in for the Eagles. Brandon, I apologize. It's the announcer jinx. It's amazing how undefeated it is. How many times has a broadcaster said, oh, this kicker's made 13 field goals in a row. What happens? <laughs> Shank to the left. All the time. Let's see if Brandon can uh, make me feel a little better and knock down the second. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. Western Michigan with a nine-point lead. They led by four at the break, and the lead is ballooned to nine. Gross, the leading scorer for the Eagles, gives it up to Spotsville. He's their leading scorer tonight. Morgan hit while shooting the three. Printy can't believe the call. Morgan gets to go to the line for three. Well, that's the movement that Coach Murphy wanted right there, was to move the ball around. I'm not sure he wanted the three. But Printy bailed him out by following him on the closeout. Morgan going to the line, 69% shooter from the line on the year. All Printy can do is smile. Got the roll in there. Morgan now with six points in the game. A guy who's taken a circuitous route to Ypsilanti. Began his college career at Farley Dickinson in New Jersey, then moved on to Northwest Florida State College. That's where Rob Murphy found him last year. This year, he's been a good piece off the bench for EMU. Nine and a half points per game, although he struggled against Central Michigan over the weekend. On Saturday, had just nine, had nine minutes and one point against Central Michigan. Good for him there. Knocks down all three free throws, and the Eagles get a little bit of a boost. Western's got to be patient. Keep looking, prodding inside. They go inside to a million. Triple teams. And it's tipped out of bounds. Morgan touched it last. That's got to be a catch in a, in a shot right there. That was great penetration. Nice pass. Got to be able to catch that, gather it, and score. 
Broncos have two starters on the floor and White and Johnson. Printy, Boyer, Richard, Emilian all off the bench. Johnson, touch pass. Emilian blocked from behind by Gross. The ball is out of bounds off of Eastern Michigan, but the shot clock down to just four. Look at a great look right there. If Emilian turns and gets his body parallel to the basket, you don't create a block angle. If there's a block angle because he's facing sideways. You get parallel, it's a foul, and it's an and one you scored. Broncos got to work quickly. They can't. Turnover. Montero glides. Misses. Torre back in, and he jams down his first bucket tonight. That'll get him going. No pun intended, but we might have, if you're the Broncos, just uh, awakened the sleeping giant. Boyer Richard from the corner. He answers. A huge shot for Broncos and a great shot for his, his confidence. Boyer Richard was the best three-point shooter on Western Michigan last year. Statistically had one of the best seasons in the history of Western Michigan hoops from behind the long line. This year he struggled for a lot of the year, and he just picked up his first foul after making the three. Just a great follow. You're in transition. you got to find that big body. If not, that's going to happen. That dunk, there was some frustration let out while he was hanging on the rim. It's been a tough night for Bubakar. Still think, though, Coach, he's going to play a big factor in the final 849. First one for Montero, short, and the Broncos catch a break. Yeah, if you're Eastern, you got to make sure he gets some touches. Torrey matched up down low with Wright. Cruz glides past everybody. White in the corner, long. Wright the rebound, and Noah Morgan draws the foul down low. That's a 6-5 guy trying to guard 6-8, and he draws the personal. Again, you had baseline penetration by Cruz, which you know drew defense, left the artist wide open on the backside, which put right in a great spot for a missed three if it didn't go in. Titus hasn't been able to play as many minutes as he'd like tonight with three personal fouls. And misses the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Only 19 fouls, though, in Eastern Michigan. So the next one on the Eagles, and the Broncos are in the double bonus the rest of the way. Spotsville blocked by Wright. It's a block party in Kazu right now. Almost identical to the block that Johnson had. Spotsville going down the lane, and Titus Wright was there to greet him. Off the inbound, Montero misses, and Wright rebounds. Titus hasn't scored yet tonight, but he has grabbed three rebounds, and he just had that emphatic block. Flowers guarded by Montero. White looking inside. Broncos trying to beat the zone. Johnson turns, shoots, misses. Halfway down and out. Pretty good location for that shot. Western had a nice little passing triangle. It was three on two right there in the short corner. Morgan caught the pass out of bounds. And the turnover struggles continue for Eastern Michigan. They just turned it over for the 10th time tonight. Broncos up by seven, 7.35 to go on senior night. Can they close it out? Second to last regular season game for both of these squads, Eastern Michigan and Western Michigan trying to build momentum toward the MAC tournament, which starts next week. And as we look at the standings entering tonight, Coach, Western Michigan, two games back of eighth in Ohio. If you're five, six, seven, and eight, you get to host in the first round of the MAC tournament. Top four get an automatic five. Eastern Michigan, only a game back. And as we take a look at tonight's scoreboard, we start to see how things are shaking out. Ohio taking on Akron, and they're actually up by 13 on a Zips team that's been one of the classes of the conference so far this year. NIU, the team that Western Michigan beat over the weekend, 
is up on Toledo by 13. Miami down by 10 to Buffalo. Central Michigan's really been martyred in the slump. They're down again to Ball State. And Penn State taking it to Bowling Green. The top two teams in the conference, Bowling Green, Akron, losing again tonight. You say it often in conferences. Sometimes it's a cliche. It's really true in this conference this year. You never know what you're going to get on any given night. I'm sure you cannot become complacent. You have to play every game like it's the game, and that's it. Which is going to make the tournament so much more fun next week. Cruz Jr. hits the jumper. The Broncos have equaled their largest lead of the half at nine. Flowers tried to pick off the pass, and Michael just got called for the personal. Right idea. Don't go to the man, go to the gap. You've said that twice in the last couple of minutes. It's like a cornerback in football, right? They teach you play the ball, don't play the body, because if you play the body, they're probably going to call you for pass interference. If he'd have been on the line, up the line, he wouldn't pass away. Cut that distance down. You're off to the races with a steal the other way. Chris Jaynes knocks down the first. The freshman from Long Beach, California gets one more. Went from Long Beach, California to Ypsilanti, Michigan. Slight change in climate for you, my friend. Went to a noted prep power in California, St. John Bosco. Some of their athletic alums, you've probably heard of these guys. Nomar Garcia Parra, Evan Longoria, and Josh Rosen. Eagles have slimmed it down to a seven-point game. We're under seven minutes to go. Eagles have trailed the Broncos for much of the game. Eight to shoot. One-handed catch by White. Flowers fakes the three. Cruz takes the three and hits it. Wow, that was a huge shot as that shot clock was winding down. Double-digit lead for Western Michigan. And a travel on Eastern Michigan. Spotsville takes too many steps, and the Broncos are starting to feel it. Nice high arch shot right there. Nice follow through. When you hit an open corner three, you can stare into the camera as much as you want. Broncos breaking the press. Right bounce pass. Johnson fouled. Well, that was a great job by the Broncos of not being tentative versus the press, attacking the press, especially by right. Post player, a lot of times they wait, hold the ball for a guard to come and get it. He looked right away for Johnson. Sometimes, Coach, you look on the floor, you look at body language, it's a big deal. Look at all those guys for Eastern Michigan. Heads down, hands on hips. Western Michigan for much of this second half has taken the fight to Eastern Michigan and the Eagles haven't had a counterpunch. They have. They haven't backed down. And they, they have not played selfish, sharing the basketball, doing the little things right to be successful. Johnson knocks them both down from the line. 20 points for Johnson, 12 of 14 from the free throw line. His eighth game this year with 20 or more. Gross, blocked by Johnson. Loose on the deck. Ty finds it and scores it. And one. Gosh, you know, Western just made a great hustle play, great effort. You're going to be unlucky when you're that close to the basket with the big grabbing the ball. White tried to run with the ball before he had it. He saw Johnson leaking out. He wanted to pass it to him for a highlight dunk. Now it turns into a chance for Gross to make a free throw that he misses, stuck on the 11 points. That's his season average. Broncos are having no problems with that Eagles press. Handling the ball with confidence, and they're getting in the passing lanes to catch the ball versus playing behind a defender. Rafael Cruz is on the floor with four fouls, by the way. Flowers fouled. It's on Chris James. You know, Cruz is one of those, another one of those players that gives that extra spark, does the little things right, that as a coach, you know you can count on that when they come off the bench. Rafael has started a couple of times for Western Michigan this year. He's coming out replaced by Jared Printy, the senior who got the start tonight on senior night. 
man, just imagine when that coaching staff gets a hold of Cruz for an entire offseason. He's another one of those guys who could take a quantum leap forward next year from Western Michigan. They'll make the Broncos a pretty good team next year. Right, and we've seen it happen as the seasons went along. A lot of improvement for this squad, and tonight's score shows it. An 11-point lead against a hot Eastern Michigan team. Down low, collision, and an offensive foul on James and just picked up his third personal. You know, Beardis White put himself in a great position. He was trying to help double on Torre. Came inside and took it right on the chin. Maybe a bruise there tomorrow, but it's all worth it. Eagles running this press again, coach. Broncos break it and slow it up. Nice patience. Now they got to attack gaps and have sureness with the basketball right here. You know, fake a pass, make a pass, which Flowers just did right there. Johnson to Printy. Senior misses. Rebound banging off of bodies, and it'll stay with Western Michigan unless they change their mind. They change their mind. It's Eastern Michigan ball. Broncos have only turned it over, Coach, to your point, four times in the second half. They turned it over six times in the first half. Eastern Michigan, for the game, has turned it over 11 times. Their average for the season is 15 turnovers per game. Their turnovers tonight have really come in spurts. The Western's been, you know, fake one, make one. Guys moving to the pass. Spotsville traveled. He's done that a couple of times tonight. Nice help defense by the Broncos. Get two guys right there closing in on the help line. Rob Murphy has been a frustrated man much of tonight. Western Michigan had a tough time closing against NIU on Saturday. They led by 18 points with eight minutes to go. Game was tied with 30 seconds left. Jared Printy hit a three with five and a half seconds left to clinch a victory for WMU. Flowers getting rid of his defender. Shot clock at eight. Printy with the catch. Jared moves left and hits his first shot on senior night. Well, a big time shot, driving baseline on the left and shooting it with his right hand. Bubakar Torre has been quiet much of this night with two points. And he travels again here. His nightmare night continues. That's a heads up play by Wright. Moved his feet, tried to beat him to the baseline. Western Michigan. Nine and five at home this year. 355 and counting away from home win number 10. In 16 of the last 18 years, they've won at least 10 home games. Last year was a blip on the radar. The Broncos are back to being good at home. Right, stepped out of bounds. And Eastern Michigan creates the turnover, which halts action for maybe the final time. 343 remaining, Western Michigan up by 13, looking to close out a win on senior night after the break. That has been a frustrated Eastern Michigan bunch for much of tonight. They need a late flurry and fast, down by 13 points with 343 to go. Coach, a big reason why Eastern Michigan is down by so many points here late in the game, they've got nothing from Bubakar Torre. Their big guy has just two points. He does have a bunch of rebounds, 10 of the game, but he's nowhere close to having another double-double. Brandon Johnson, who has at least 12 points and seven rebounds in each of his last seven games, well, you can add more to the total tonight. 20 points, 10 rebounds, another double-double for Johnson, his seventh of the year. Eagles need a late flurry. Maybe that bucket from Jalen King helps, but coach, to finish the point, Johnson's just been a beast tonight. He has, and again, he's a mismatch problem because he can play any spot on the floor. Broncos breaking a press from the Eagles. And now they're going to slow it up, trying to chew up some clock. The artist White hits the gas. Finds the senior Jared Printy. He's played a good chunk of the game on senior night. 
He and Adida Ikangshul, the two seniors, got the start. Right with five to shoot. Dribbling right. Now moves left. Off the glass and good. That's a big shot by the freshman. Great patience by all five of the Broncos on the floor. He's had to do some hard work down low tonight. Just got rewarded with his first bucket. Montero meets two. Spins and scores. Montero. Wow. It was a little circus. The Eagles getting some offense late. Now they need some stops. Broncos beat NIU here on Saturday. Trying to close out the home slate with a W tonight. Johnson fakes. She went up some clock. Now moves. Floats it up. Misses. Eagles running and pushing. Morgan for three. No. Printy skies for the rebound. Senior draws a foul amidst a crowd. For the last two possessions, what a fantastic job by Western of, of spacing way up and trying to bring that defense away from the basket. It creates driving lanes. Eagles a team that has been offensively challenged much of the year. They've been a great defensive team, tied statistically for the fewest points per game allowed in the MAC. But they also score the fewest points per game in the MAC. And tonight, that story has been told again. Here's Jared Printy, the senior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, made the game-winning three against Northern Illinois on Saturday, closing out his career with a couple of shots of the line. Of course, Jared and the Broncos have one more game. They're going to Central Michigan on Friday. They close this one out tonight. They'll be up to 6-11 and 11 in the MAC. They needed Ohio to lose tonight to potentially host a game in the MAC tournament. They entered tonight two back with two to go. Ohio at last check was beating Akron. Princey, the senior, comes out, and he gets a well-deserved hand from the home crowd. Well, Eastern's going to have to be in a hurry. Morgan trying to shake White. He can't do it yet. Under two minutes to go. Benelli shoots, misses. The three-point sharpshooter for much of the year for Eastern Michigan has just been in an otherworldly funk the last two games. One and 19 from deep, and the Eagles have to commit another foul. You know, a lot of their their struggles offensively, we've, we said this during the whole broadcast, that Torrey does not get enough touches, or at least tonight has not got enough touches. Two points on exactly one shot, which was a dunk. And that was him following someone's miss. Coach, if my memory holds true, they didn't go inside to Torre for a design play once in the game. I can't remember one. Can you? No, no and with a guy that size, you can use use him to set a double double stagger screen, run somebody off a, a zipper screen up the lane, and then post up inside. Just got to use him and get movement off of him. Morgan driving inside on White, misses the shot, right the rebound. Flowers in the backcourt, shaking Benelli across half court. Western Michigan, barring a comeback for the ages for Eastern Michigan, going to pick up home win number 10. Cruz misses. That really wasn't a smart shot. Eagles on the run out. James misses. Johnson tracks down his 11th rebound tonight. Yeah, not a, not a wise decision by Cruz. You have the lead, and you only used about seven seconds of the shot clock. Steve Hawkins calls a timeout. I think he called that timeout to get a senior Adida Iconchul in one last time. He comes back in after the break. On senior night, Jared Princey and Adida Iconchul, number four and number 24, are going to get to go out with the W. This has been an awesome performance for Western Michigan, really since the jump, leading by 13 with 72 seconds left. Evan Stockton back with Wayne Hinton, Sam Matlin on the sidelines. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for joining us at any time this year for Western Michigan home basketball broadcast. Connor Klingen and I have been the play-by-play -play guys. Wayne Hinton, Joe Hacklin been the color analyst. Don't forget about the great Austin Ritchie as well. Sam's been on the sidelines. Thanks for joining us and our whole crew. It's been a joy to be here at University Arena for home men hoops games all year long. 
Shot clock running down for Flowers, who muscles through the D, misses. Johnson to Adina Iconshul, who provides a senior moment. What a great servant leadership opportunity for Johnson. Could have shot that himself, found his senior teammate. That bench is going nuts. Adina grabbed the rebound to his first points of the year in MAC play. How cool is that? He just went right to Brandon Johnson and gave him a big bear hug. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, he knew how, how big that was for his teammate to, to give it up to him. Seniors coming out. And the crowd rises to clap for him. That's what college sports are all about right there. Relationships and you know doing it for other people. Adida Akansho, senior originally from Cross River State, Nigeria. Came to the States in Madison, Indiana. Bless his heart. When he heard Madison, he thought it was Madison Square Garden. There's a slight difference between Manhattan <laughs> in Madison, Indiana, but he gets a bucket on senior night. Both seniors scored. Both seniors got the start. And now the Broncos are salting away win number 10 at home this year. 10 to shoot. White the freshman to Boye Richard. Back to White. Now five to shoot. The artist has his dribble stopped. Boye Richard misses. Whitens the rebound on the deck. No. Grabs it again, and he's fouled. And that spurt right there is pretty much how Western has played, especially in the second half, just fighting and scrapping, playing every possession like it might be their last. Western Michigan led by four at halftime. They will now be 11 and one when they lead at halftime this year. Give credit to Eastern Michigan early in the second half. They took the lead for a brief time, but then the Broncos just took the fight right to them. Whitens misses. Benelli will shoot from half court and miss. Western Michigan on senior night for Jared Clinton and Adida Iconshul gives them a final happy memory in Kalamazoo, Michigan. What a win for Western Michigan tonight. A 16 point W, the largest win of the year in that play. You deserve to show off for the camera. Western Michigan has won two in a row, beat NIU in a thrilling game. Jared Prinzi had a late three to clap a victory on Saturday. And today, this one was pretty much cinched up about halfway through the second half. Broncos go on the road to Central Michigan on Friday. Entering tonight, there was still a chance for them to host a game in the MAC tournament, but they entered two games back of Ohio. They needed the Bobcats to lose twice, and at last check, Ohio was winning by 11 against Akron. So this likely will be the final time we see Western Michigan here in Kalamazoo for the 2019-2020 season. This is a team on the come up. The last couple of games, they played really, really well. Nearly everybody is coming back next year. Adida Iconshul and Jared Printy walking off the floor one more time as victors in Kalamazoo. Adida Iconshul scored in the final few seconds of the game. Grabbed a rebound as well. What a moment for him. Jared Printy had a bucket as well. Had that awesome senior moment on Saturday. And here's Jared standing by with Sam Mapp. Jared, you spent your four years here at Western Michigan. What does this game mean for you tonight? Oh, a ton. Uh, the last game probably I'll ever play here. Uh, just thankful we could get the win on such a special night and that so many of my family and friends were able to be here and support me. You've also hit two game winners during your season, yeah. senior season. What does that mean for you closing out your senior year? Oh, it's great. It's, uh, it's something I can talk about for the rest of my life. Uh, just a lot of work, and it's, it's cool to see that pay off. Rival Central Michigan on Friday. Yeah. As a senior, what does that game mean for you and this team? Oh, it's, uh, it's going to be a big game. We're still fighting for seeding, and obviously, you know, Central's a good basketball team, and they beat us here earlier, so we're going to have to be ready to go. Thank you, Jared. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to the entire Western Michigan squad. Jared Printy, joined by Sam Matlin.
Adidai Kongshul is going to be joined by Sam here in just a second. Let's He's go to them now. He's trying to run away. All right, Dita, your four years here comes to a close tonight, potentially. What does these four years mean to you? It has, mean, it has meant a lot. I have met, uh, made so much friends here. And the coaching staff have taken care of me when I was hurt. It's just unbelievable that it came so fast. Your last conference game is Friday against Central Michigan. What is your message to those younger guys in the locker room? Oh, I'll tell them we still hate Central Michigan. We have to go there and take the game on their court. Because um, we've not played well against them the past uh, couple of times. Um, we, we just have to change the story now. We're on this roll, winning games. We just got to keep the intensity up, and I think we'll take the game. Thank you, Dina. Congratulations. Thank you. I get it. Everybody in collegiate athletics wants to go play in the pros. Everyone in college hoops wants to play in the NBA. That doesn't happen for 99.9% .9 of the population. You just want to learn. You want to grow. You want to become better humans from playing college sports. And Adida Iconshul and Jared Printy, they're great humans, and they are going to be outstanding people in whatever they do when they leave Kalamazoo. Good for them getting a win on their senior night. Western Michigan wins 70-54. For Wayne Hinton, Sam Matlin, and the rest of our crew, Evan Stockton saying so long from Kalamazoo and University Arena, where tonight Western Michigan wins by 16. All games airing on the ESPN Network, streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Have an awesome rest of your Tuesday night.